Hi guys, back with another cooking video for you. Tonight I'm going to make alkaline fajitas with guacamole. And we're going to make the uh, tortilla shell. Not really a tortilla shell, but we're going to make a wrap for it. And we're going to make some guacamole. And here's what you'll need so far. You're going to need two red peppers or green or yellow, your choice, but I'm using red. You're going to need a package of mushrooms, two small onions, two small plum tomatoes, two tablespoons of red onion, one key lime, garbanzo bean flour. We'll get to see, we'll get to how much here in a few. You're gonna need some garbanzo bean flour. And then you're also gonna need onion powder, oregano, basil, uh, cayenne, sea salt, and coriander, and some grapeseed oil. All right, so let's get started. First, we're going to make the tortilla shells. Well, not tortilla shells, but they're going to be wraps. You're going to need, I've got in here a cup and a half of garbanzo bean flour. Uh, this is my first time doing it on video, and I usually just eyeball it. So I'm going to add the water here a fourth a cup at a time to see if it's enough and see if it's enough liquid that I need. Let me get my measuring cup. So let's add a uh, fourth a cup of water at a time. We want it to be runny. So, here's a fourth. I can tell right away that's not going to be enough. Alright, here's another fourth. Let me get my spoon. See that? Or actually my fork. That would be even better. I'm going to stir it up and see if it's runny enough. Nope. Definitely not. So we're going to add another fourth cup of spring water, stir it in, all right, let's see here, so that's a full cup of water now, so a cup and a half of garbanzo bean flour to a cup of water. Actually, I'm going to get my whisk. That's going to be even better. You want to break a lot of these particles up. Actually, it's still not runny enough. So, we're going to add another fourth cup of spring water. There's another fourth cup. Stir that up. Okay, so one and one fourth cup of spring water to one and a half cups of garbanzo bean flour. Now to this we're going to add, let's see we don't need that. Oops. Okay, a teaspoon of oregano. teaspoon of basil, a teaspoon of half a teaspoon of sea salt. Sea salt's optional. A heaping teaspoon of onion powder and cayenne. Cayenne is optional. I'm going to put in a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne. Twist that all together. And um, if you haven't turned your pan on, get that going. Mine's been on, I forgot to mention that. So get your pan going. And also, you're going to want to have a container ready, whatever kind of container you have. Maybe you even have a tortilla container. I just take a plastic bowl with a lid, and I put some paper towels on the bottom. Once the tortilla is done, 
I put it in there and lay the lid back on. So it has somewhere to sit so it can stay warm. Doesn't necessarily have to stay warm, but I like mine to stay moist. They hold their form better. All right, only a very light, light amount of oil are you going to put on the pan because right now we're going to make them. All right, just a light amount. Let's get this. Just spray it lightly and then get your little spatula. All right, just spread it around. All right. Then I like to use a soup ladle. Make sure your pan's nice and hot. I got it on a medium, uh, number four for the old foot stoves, like a medium high. Pour this on. If you want to hear that sizzle, then you know your pan's hot enough. I'm going to make it big enough for veggies and stuff. I like to just pour it around the edge if I, until I feel like it's big enough. Don't worry about little mistakes and whatnot. And you can use your spoon to spread it out too. Just be careful when you do it. There we go. I like the size of that one. But like I said, be careful when you spread out your spoon. If you think you spread it too much, just take a little bit in the spots that you think it spread too far. All right, now you need to let it cook. It's usually about 30, 40 seconds on each side, maybe longer but if it's too thick if your batter's too thick it's not it's going to take longer and it may not work the same see how runny this is i want you to look at that again okay let's get back to the cookedness all right it's starting to um cook up real fast here wish i could get you in closer we'll see i'll try There we go. Hopefully that, that's nice and close. Now this is perfect for flipping. Go around the edge first because this thing is delicate. There we go. Just let it cook. Kind of looks like eggs. I'm going to cook one here with you on screen before I skip through to the next part. I suggest a cast iron only because it's the only way I've tried to make these. I have not tried to make them in any other type of pan. And as you know, Dr. Sabi prefers that we use cast iron, glass, or stainless steel. But I've only made these in cast iron. All right. I think that's good. So there you are. See, and that's going to be a wrap. I'm going to put it in the bowl. Let it sit in there. See that? Just let it sit in your bowl. And just lay the lid on. You ain't got to seal it. Just a little spray. Not much at all. Spread it around a little. Get your soup ladle. Oh, I went too fast. I got some off to the edge. Let me scrape that over to the middle. Okay. Just to be a little bigger. This one's a little too big, but that's okay. And I got some extra on here. I'm just gonna scrape that off. And let it cook. And then once we get the vegetables in here, um, while those are cooking, we'll make my really flavorful guacamole. It's so addicting. It really, really, really is. 
And I make about six of these for our family. We each have two. Then we usually have fruit on the side. If, maybe, because sometimes these are very filling. So it depends. Oh yeah, look at that. A little bubbles here. My, It feels a little moist in there, so I'm going to let it cook where those bubbles were. Oh yeah, perfect. Now we're going to put it back in our bowl. All right. Pour it on just gently. You'll hear it sizzle if your pan's hot enough. If it's not enough, add some more around the edges. Use your ladle to spread it out a little bit if you need to. If you spread it too far, just add a little bit more on those spots that got spread too far. Let it cook. There we go. All right, when that's done, or are you sure, if you're not sure, you can just flip it over and see how the other side looks. You can even touch it, you know. Um, it will be, you'll feel a little tenderness in there. That's normal. Once it sets, it'll set up a little better. It just sets up. It, like, firms up a little bit more is what I'm trying to say. Get you another one in there. Perfect. Let it cook. Another way to look at it is it for telling if it's done or not. You'll start to see maybe the edges dry up a little bit, little bubbles like a pancake. Then you know you can flip it. Okay? See how many is in there. One, two, three, four. All right. So this batter should make six. That's what it's making for me. If you did it just like I did. this last one cook. Alright, this last one should be done. Check it. Yep. Looks perfect. There's six waiting there in the bowl. Now, we're going to get the filling made. Now we're going to make a little stir fry. Oil the pan just a little. Maybe just a little bit more. And you're going to need two sliced small onions. Slice them the long way. They're better when you're making tortillas. If you like it differently, do it differently. It's fine. And we're going to add two sliced red peppers. Now you can actually do one small onion, one red pepper, and a half package of mushrooms. But I'm hoping that there's some leftovers this time for lunch tomorrow. And one package of mushrooms. Sliced. Let that cook. So 
some of these are stuck together, so I want to make sure they're separated. Keep your heat the same, the medium high. I got mine on four. I had to double check it. Okay, let that cook. Now remember, you can use any type of pepper you want. And if you only have red onion, you can use red onion instead. I do it all the time. I use what I have left in the house. While that is cooking, we're going to make the guacamole. So, Alright, I have here two small, or three small avocados already taken out the shell and de-seeded and stuff ready to go. And the little brown spots are because the guacamole was just starting to go so I wanted to use it before it gets too bad but it, it's fine. We're going to add the juice of one key lime. I like to get all the juice so I put them on top of each other and run it through again. Okay. Then, about two tablespoons of red onion. If you don't like a lot of onion, you can do less. My light just went out, so I apologize. It's because my camera must be getting hot. So hopefully you can still see what's going on here. Then, um, the plum tomatoes that I told you to have ready. If you don't already have them chopped, you can chop them now in small little diced pieces like that. All right, so now to this, we're going to add, this is optional, this is cayenne. I'm going to add a fourth teaspoon of cayenne. And then I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of onion powder. I don't need anybody telling me this isn't guacamole. This is the way I like to make it. So if you don't like it this way, don't make it. I like lots of flavor. A half a teaspoon of sea salt. And a half a teaspoon of coriander. That was a little heaping. Give these a stir real quick. And the seasonings that I use, if you feel it wasn't enough, you need a little bit more after you taste it, you can go back and add more. But don't put in your tomatoes until you got your flavor right. Too much stirring, those tomatoes will just fall apart. Make it too watery. Okay. Now that we've got the seasoning we want in there, now that we've got the seasoning in the guacamole, I mean, we're going to start mashing it up. This is how I do mine because it's easier. And I like it super creamy. Just rinse this out as soon as you're done using it because if this stuff dries up on the potato masher and you're using one like I have, it's going to be really hard to clean. Can you taste it? Okay. It tastes perfect. It's perfect. Now we're going to add the tomatoes. Let me make sure. I'm going to need another spoon. And stir this in. I used two plum tomatoes because the ones I had this time were really small. And I used two, three avocados this time because the ones I had were really small. Normally, if they're a little bit bigger, I use two and one big plum tomato. There you go. Now, put a lid on it until you're ready to use it so it doesn't turn brown. And put that aside until dinner's done. Right. 
couldn't get the light on, so it's still too warm. It's okay. We're going to cook this, cook it down. And um, it's about halfway there right now, so that's when I'm going to add our seasoning. So we're going to add a half a teaspoon of sea salt. A teaspoon of onion powder and of course some cayenne don't add the cayenne if you don't want to I'm adding about a fourth a teaspoon that's all I'm adding this time if you want to add oregano and basil you can but Tastes so good just like this. With the guacamole, you really won't need much more salt than what I than what I recommended putting in here. Because that's got lots and lots of flavor. Get that stirred up and let it cook down. I'll be back once this is done. Alright guys, we are back. Sorry the lighting is not good. Like I said, the flash disabled itself on my phone. Still too hot. But these are cooked down the way I like it. The pepper's just a little crunchy and everything else is nice and soft. So now I'm going to show you how I assemble it here. Get your little plate ready. Get you one of your um, tortilla shells out. Start filling it. Just like that. If you don't like guacamole, you can even put salsa on this. But this is about guacamole today. I like a lot of it. Put as much as you want. There you are. Got one. Let's move that over so we can get two in there. Do another one in here. Fill it right up. Guacamole. Maybe I'd put too much on, who knows. I go a little overboard. There you are. This one. Yeah, maybe I put a little too much, but it's good. Look at that, okay? This is so yummy. And I'll try to insert a photo. I usually haven't been inserting them like I said I would. I've been using the pretty little photos for the thumbnail. So we'll see. Maybe I'll use it for a thumbnail. Maybe I'll insert the pretty little photo. But yeah, there it is again. It's so good. All right, guys. See you on the next video.